Es una propuesta de los estudiantes de la Escuela de Cine que eh, en colaboración con Ben Gasto, profesor visitante, eh, decidieron compartir estos videos en los que él fue parte del, eh, del equipo de producción y equipo de dirección de fotografía que hablan sobre las víctimas del comunismo. Bueno, ahorita les vamos a poner los videos, son tres, son de proyecto Witness Project, de Victims of Communism, donde estuvo participando Ben Gasco como el director de fotografía. So, well, thank you, Ben, for being here, and I, I mean, I've seen these videos like a lot of time, and I still feel how strong they are and how much they talk to me, like... These are the kind of messages that I would like everyone to see. Like, communism is something so terrible, and this is the living proof of it. Like, uh, people who can go back to their countries because of it, and all the terrible things it, it does to the world. And it's a really great thing that we have access to them and that we get to be here with you so that we can help spread this message and uh, inform people how it really is. So... Yeah, my first question is about how did you get in contact with victims of, co of communism ha and how, how was the process, how long did it take, like the overall experience? Yeah, um, the, well, and, and also I, I just want to say too, it was, uh, yeah, it was an honor to get to shoot uh, those documentaries. And it's, it's interesting too, um, it's been a while since I watched them and, you know, each one is kind of this moment captured in time when I brought my best abilities as a cinematographer to each one of those stories and kind of seeing them in succession because they were all shot, you know, a, a year, maybe two years apart, just kind of makes me um, reflect on, yeah, like having had the opportunity to shoot them and I'm grateful for sure. Uh, but yeah, um, so the director, Adam Hawk Jensen, um, he reached out to me um, I, you know, I work as a full-time um, freelance uh, cinematographer in LA, and he and I had worked together on um, the uh, the feature documentary called Honor Flight. Um, he he was the editor, and, and we just had a really good rapport together. So when he had the opportunity to to work on this documentary series, he reached out to me, and we started collaborating and building ideas together. Yeah, that's. Great, I mean, the final result is, is amazing. And yeah, we can see like the progression of how the videos uh, were improving each time. So, I mean, when it comes to documentaries, we don't always have like a large crew and the time is shorter and everything is like moving quicker. So was it hard or, I mean, did you have a lot of crew or did you have to do things that you don't usually do when you're working as a DP? Yeah, um, it's... Very, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's always a difficult challenge, you know, because you don't, I mean, documentaries inherently, uh, they have a built-in discovery process, and um, as I've grown in my craft, I've learned, I've learned to embrace that, to, to accept it for what it is, but also kind of to love it for the beast that it is. Um, documentaries, uh, God, they're just fun, because you have to immerse yourself entirely in um, the opportunity as well as the constraints. So, uh, yeah, I mean, um, on each of them, I, I think we were limited to, yeah, well, they're all a little different. Some were a three-day shoot, some were a two-day shoot, and uh, some we had enough of a budget to bring, um, you know, I could have a first AC, a camera assistant, as well as a gaffer to help me with lighting design. Um, And uh, I, think, I think the Anastasia Lin one sort of represents the most um, in terms of having uh, the most resources available to us to, um, yeah, to execute the vision that we had for it, so. And did you have like a lot of pre-production, like weeks, months, or was it more like improvising the shots and the Well, uh, the director, Adam, um, he, he does spend a lot of time developing these stories and trying to distill down all the, the facts into, I don't want to say a compelling narrative, but into the right questions that will enable um, each documentary you know, subject, each of these stories to, to kind of give, give him um, you know, the, the interview footage that he needs to, to tell their story in, in a meaningful way. Um, but for my contribution, 
you know, I, I do try to kind of get involved earlier on to understand like what the mechanics of the story are. Um, and, and also just to kind of give myself the opportunity to live, uh, live in their world a little bit because the stories are really heavy, you know, and um, some of them, I, don't, I get super emotional now thinking about it, like, especially Nal, Nal Ohm, like his story. Um, God, man, like that one was really intense. It was, it was my birthday uh, when we were shooting that one. And uh, that's actually, uh, <laughs> you like Nal saying me happy birthday along with the rest of the crew. Um, yeah, but anyway, to answer the question, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's it is helpful to to get in there early on in the process and just be thinking about, you know, what does it look like to have to tell this story, and and then the most difficult thing is when you do get there on the day of, to see the limitations and be like, all right, well, ten of these ideas are not going to fit either the schedule, the budget, the crew, or any number of things, locations. Um, so you kind of have to just embrace embrace the, the limitations. Yeah, because, yeah, you're right. These stories are really heavy and they have a lot of weight. So I, I was really curious about how did you manage to kind of merge your art with these stories? Because we're talking about communism. We're talking about how this system has used uh, violence, lies, manipulation, and terrible things in order to spread their well, awful intentions. So, yeah, how did you manage, like, lighting and, you know, composition in order to help to better tell the story, but not make it as artistic as, so that we forget the message? How did you handle that? Um, I mean, I, I, I do, I care about these stories a lot, and um, I'm also really passionate about the ideas of promoting, you know, freedom. Um, as well as, uh, I don't know, man, like any, any kind of system of government that enables uh, their citizens to have a better experience of, you know, human dignity. Like, that's a good thing. Um, trying to kind of mm, uh, create, I guess, a visual experience of what that is. Like, that's a really heavy, deep idea. That's a philosophical idea that doesn't really apply very well to the visual medium. So I think that, you know, the Anastasia Lynn documentary, that one sort of stands out because, um, you know, it's, it's the most recent. I think we shot it uh, whoa, a little over, uh, yeah, over a year ago now. Wow. Um, but, you know, I have been growing in my craft. I've been, you know, understanding that when I walk into a room, knowing what I do about the story, um, I'm able to, especially with Anastasia, I, I had more of the means as a cinematographer to understand like if we shoot this and we look here and we use these kinds of lenses if we bring together these resources in this way it's going to have more of a visual um and even visual it's it's going to take on more of a meaningful experience as a viewer and so you know in some ways um that's kind of why at the beginning i talk about how they're they're kind of these time capsules to myself because it it um reminds me of what I once saw was the story, and I did my best to capture it in that way. And how, as I grew as a cinematographer, you know, these videos have grown uh, and kind of more of their ability to have a nuanced language, you know. And, and I feel fortunate enough that, that the stories were just powerful enough alone that, um, you know, even though I might not have been the best cinematographer at the time, uh, I was there to, to be the best steward of the story and to try and tell, um, visually tell the most truth, you know? Yeah, of course, like, you have many close-ups and, I mean, I feel close to the, to the ones who are speaking in the videos. I feel, you know, the lighting, everything sets, like, the mood so that I can understand what they're saying and feel the pain because these are, these are painful stories and I, I feel that. And, well, talking about the Anastasia one, uh, I understand that the, well, you have these beautiful shots where there's a girl and then there's Anastasia and she's like doing calligraphy with black paint. Well, you were the one who came up with those shots. So, like, how did you, like, how did it occur to you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, 
you know, when uh, the director, Adam, when, when he's developing those stories, uh, I'll get these phone calls, you know, and he'll be like, Ben, okay, so what do you think? Like, like what do you, you know, talk to me? And, and there's a little bit of salesmanship in, on my part in, in wanting to be like, all right, here's what, you know, here's what I want to do. Here's this, that, and the other. And, and early on, when I heard about, you know, um, it's like, it was a big part of her story that she had talked about with the pre-interviews um, of doing Chinese calligraphy as a child. When I heard about that, you know, wanting to tell a visual story, it's like, oh man, the movement of the paintbrush, like the ink on the canvas, um, it, it's perfect. It's so perfect. Uh, and I wanted to shoot it so bad that I actually, um, you know, we, <laughs> he, he said it was fine. He's like, yeah, sure, go for it, definitely. You know, I, I like that idea. Um, whatever you need to make that happen. Uh, but we ran out of time, of course, uh, during principal photography when we had Anastasia. Uh, so before we wrapped out, um, I, I asked her, I was like, hey, all these brushes and all this stuff you use, can I, can I take this home? You know, and was, we had it all in a paper bag, and, and I was like, Hawk, was Adam, he goes by Hawk. I was like, Adam, listen, um, I'm just gonna shoot some more inserts at home I'll just, I'll just figure it out. I'm going to send you some footage. And so, you know, cut to, it's like two, I think it's actually a month later. Yeah. And I'm in my living room. It's like, it's, it was just the dumbest setup of uh, this camera that's like rigged directly over paper. And I don't know how to do Chinese calligraphy. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I'm like, you know, dropping ink and swiping it in some elegant way. And uh, it was ridiculous. But you wouldn't know it when you see the footage. So sometimes the ridiculous thing is what's needed for the film. Yeah, I mean, the, the result is, is great. And I think it's a really good thing that you got to help spread this measure, message in a really visual way so that it looked like pretty. And it's easier for people to understand what really happens with communism because it's something terrible. And I think it's not like we don't know enough of it and yeah it's it's a great thing that you got to shut this because it's something that happens and it's not so far from us because we're seeing these are real people and they're they're witnesses of I, I think that the thing that um i i have so we've shot two more episodes uh since the anastasia one that are uh they're inches from being done they're really close um, but what I've found is a really good approach for myself as a visual storyteller um, with these, these kinds of documentaries is uh, to strive to, to find opportunities to create metaphor within the images. And, um, you know, hopefully during the photography, uh, you know, when you're shooting these docs, um, to kind of immerse yourself enough in it to see the opportunity to capture the metaphor or, you know, to create the opportunity. Um, and when it does come, throw everything you have at it. Um, so, you know, with that said, too, I've kind of changed my approach uh, in asking for a little bit more budget to be put towards lighting and camera resources that are kind of at the ready for me to utilize, you know. Um, and, I, and I think it's been pretty successful, you know. Anastasia's, uh, that her doc is, is something that I'm, yeah, I'm really grateful that I had the chance to do because it, it represents a really nice balance of a visual story with um, something that's, that's incredibly meaningful, you know. Her story is it's powerful. <laughs>